I'm here with the lovely Jenny Q Chai. I should I should be calling you Doctor Chai. Is that correct? Uh, soon. <laughs> soon. Okay. You just gave your doctoral recital last night in New York, uh, and. Uh, one of the things that struck me so much as I was watching you study at Curtis was your fashion. You always <laughs> wore the wildest clothes, but you were all the, always very sweet, warm, but also really different. You really tried to do things differently. Everything from not only what you wore, but also in the music that you studied, played, and performed. I still remember that amazing graduation recital <laughs> where you had, you know, you were playing Henry Cowell and you had the piano lit open, you're reaching over and, and hitting the strings with your fingers and making this incredible noise. Some audience thought I was uh, tuning the piano. <laughs> <laughs> that is great. So uh, I guess I'm curious to find out what is your inspiration for being so different, for in a, in a field where most musicians tend to try to be like their professors, or you know, go into competition to try to, you know, play, you know, better, but really in some ways the same. What inspired you to take such a different approach to your music? Well, I think uh, the answer to me, at least, is pretty obvious. Because there is such conformity, because there is such restriction in the field of classical music, in performances also, and especially in competitions a lot of young students go through, and you get judged so much if you just play one passage out of the style or the normal style, then you're over. <laughs> so I, I think it's maybe just a matter of courage. But I'm sure many, I've talked to many, many friends, piano f friends, pianists, and uh, they, they all hate that. Who, who want to just be another extension, another copy, the thousand co copy of someone else, and, and the same as the, hopefully, the best as a recording player. Now, um, I think I, I agree with you. I think nobody wants to be the same, and yet many musicians still find themselves trapped that way. I think the more difficult question is, not just not wanting to be the same, but mm. how do you find your own voice? And you've become a champion of modern contemporary music. You you play music of you know in the classical music field it sounds weird compared to <laughs> other you know pop music fields where they only play their own music. But you really play music that's fresh and new. What are some of the things that you look for in your own voice or your own approach? I I think it's it's not just about in the field of music. It's about a person. Uh, my friend just suggested me to start writing a blog called How to Find Yourself Before 30. <laughs> I might even start that, I'll consider that. But I, I think it's a self-searching journey that I, I took really from maybe precisely the last year of Curtis where I started and preparing for my graduation recital at Curtis, and then my studies at MSM, doctoral studies, and then my studies in Germany and my trip back to China. So the whole journey and I've tried different places, schools and continents to find myself my own voice. Now, of course, one of the things I, I, I got most excited about is that your forward-looking thinking, I think, as a musician, also has led you te to technology. Oh, I love I mean, that. You were one of the very first customers uh, of AirTerm when we first started. You, you were one of the first people to get it and use it immediately. I remember you had gotten an AirTerm pedal, or, or older models, and you immediately started putting up these videos of yourself playing contemporary music in studios, right. but using the AirTerm and an older computer. That's right. That's before iPad even existed. Exactly. And what, I... So what... what for many musicians, okay, just the leap to do something more contemporary can be a, a big challenge, a big obstacle. But then even technology is almost like that's a completely different world. What inspired you to, to embrace that? Well, it never seemed to have a barrier to me. How so? I, because it's obviously better. It's obviously more convenient. It's faster. You don't have to carry loads of uh, papers and worry about page turns, especially for contemporary music. Uh, a lot of complex scores, and uh, uh, there are just simply no places to turn often. Mm -hmm. I just, you know, you're playing like four people's uh, music at the same time, <laughs> <laughs> like Ligeti, for example. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's like impossible to turn, but it's also impossible to memorize because if there's a little glitch, of course I get it uh, pretty much all memorized, but I need some reference point. Mm -hmm. If there's a little glitch, there's no way. They're already not together. I mean, the hands are not written together, so mm -hmm. it's hard mm -hmm. to put them back together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I love it. I think technology, I also, uh, I love Apple products after it came out and it pairs so well with uh, AirTurn. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's lovely. Mm -hmm. 
And, and it's interesting too that we were talking a little bit that um, not only are you open-minded in terms of your music, embracing technology, but you're also, it turns out, an entrepreneur. I understand that you have your own music school in China. Can you tell me a little bit about That's what right. inspired you to, I mean, you're, you're quite young too to start your own school. What, what, what? 27. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, I should give that away. Well, I'm trying to pretend to be like, you know, no, older, no, no, more no. mature in my school in Shanghai. But that's, that's what's so exciting. If somebody is so young, already you have a vision for starting your own enterprise like this. What, what inspired you to start your own school? Also, just I guess the the desire, the the interest to start something different, something new. And what are the things that you are trying to help your students with? Uh, the openness, the open-mindedness. I try to offer them a universal uh, viewpoint of life and music and art that it's all together, and students are no longer just uh, craftsmen or or just people like like people who are just. Uh, I don't know, who work in a mine or something. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, to, to become young artists. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there are kids who came from conservatories to us and left the conservatory, dropped out. Um, and when they first came to us, they, they were like shell-shocked. Mm. How so? They just wouldn't, like there would be really uh, uh, lively people uh, outside the piano. As soon as they sit in front of the piano, it's like, Mm. It's like this, mm. and they will not have any response. Mm. Uh, they don't listen. They it, it's and then there are kids like that, and we've opened them up so much after three months and then six months, uh, just like different people. Now we have a kid touring in Poland and uh, in China, won con tons of competitions, and is coming to Curtis to audition. Uh, who's only twelve, and he's oh. one of those who was so shell shocked before. Oh my goodness! That's and he's like the most lively person now. He plays so beautifully. Now, do, do you uh, do you let your students see your iPad and your air turn? Oh yes, we have our iPads lying around the whole school in the lobby. People what, just what, like grab it and play. And what what do they think of the technology? Is, is oh, it they be, love it. Oh, of yeah. course, mm. of course. All our students now, it's like they bring their own pi uh, iPads and we play games together. We do some music like the uh, music garage. Mm -hmm. Garage yeah, band. Mm -hmm. Garage band. That's mm -hmm. right. And we play some. Uh, improvisation. So you actually use your iPad as a teaching tool yes, as well? Yes, yes. Fascinating. And we have given lectures in other universities and international schools uh, using iPads also. So this, uh, this is something that you would never see at, at, a, at a traditional conservatory oh, in China in, in no. terms of using technology this way? No, not at all. And also we let our students uh, study freely in the same time with all the faculty. Ah. We have five faculty there mm -hmm. now. Uh -huh. um, and how many students are you working with now? Uh, me, myself, or the, the whole school, the whole right? school yeah. because we share a lot of students, uh -huh. so uh, almost 70. Oh my goodness, right that's now. incredible. And how long has the school been in? Uh, a year and a half. That's amazing. That is amazing. I oh guess so when you pointed that out. <laughs> 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 I didn't think of it this way because for us, of course, for me who uh, has no business education background, for me the, the growth is obviously uh, overwhelming. That is amazing. Just incredible. And you have your own building? Is that, is that how that works? I mean, uh, we have our own floor. Uh -huh, our own floor. Yes. Oh, wow. Amazing. So, uh, just in conclusion, what are some of the things that are, what are some of the next projects coming up for you that you'd like to talk about? And what are your goals, both for yourself and, and for the music field? I'm not going to even say classical, just for mm. music and your art in general, because you fuse many different arts into one. Well, uh, uh, my go I don't always, I never have clear long-term goals because uh, plans are never as fast as changes in life. Interesting. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. But I, I uh, you know, I have the, the, the cause, let's say the cause I, I am, uh, I, I stand up to and uh, I, I want to, I have my passion that mm -hmm. guides me. Mm -hmm. So I, I let my passion guide me and then I, I put my devotion to it. And, and uh, so my own performance uh, plans, I uh, will be back again in April. And uh, I'll be playing at this uh, very edgy new place called Spectrum. Cool. Yeah. Cool. So tell me a little bit about that. Oh, Spectrum, it's, it's really uh, fascinating. It's so new. So it started just, I think, last year. And uh, it's like, uh, do you know the La Poisson Rouge? Yes, I just played yes, there, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so that uh, started when I was still a student, a uh, full-time student in, in New York, maybe only, uh, I don't know exactly, a few years ago. 
And in the very beginning, no, again, it's an entrepreneur thing in music. And most people had no idea, like this kind of a dungeon and basement and then <laughs> what is going to happen there? Who knows? And they do weird contemporary music there. Yeah. Wow. Uh, wow. And it turned out to be this huge blast. And, you know, the, all the media loved them. And they started, Angela Hewitt uh, was just a classical performer before, before I went, before mm -hmm. my concert, right after uh, Sandy, by mm -hmm. the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and she played a double bill of, I think, was it Bach, Prelude, Fuchs, and then the, in the night, the, the later shift was the Goldberg. Oh, in wow. a, in a basically a bar like ambiance with the best lighting <laughs> yeah how cool so, so it's you'll it, be returning to that venue i i will be returning to spectrum which is even okay. i will not be returning i'll be uh, making my i guess debut in uh at strip spectrum okay that is the let's say maybe the new Poisson Rouge uh -huh, uh -huh. and uh, that one has gotten started some attention also and have already have has grown really fast over just less than a year and uh, present festivals and the musicians there but it's a different concept it's like a very nice loft house salon kind of mm -hmm. concert mm -hmm. and people have very comfortable leather seats and then just like lots of books around it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it was very good technology always mm -hmm. it has to be <laughs> <laughs> i appreciate that <laughs> yes. so uh, so i think i i imagine that to be a italian themed um, concert wow Fast, absolutely fascinating. Jenny, just listening to you talk, it makes me so excited about um, not just your artistry and your contributions, but really for, for what you're going to do to affect the whole world of music, art, and I believe technology as well. It's wonderful to see how you're already influencing a new generation of musicians in China. I mean, bravo. I really... Oh, um, <laughs> thank you. You know, as little as we do, a lot of, I think, classical musicians, especially, we think, or we used to think that uh, what's the difference, right? Mm -hmm. Why does that matter? It's just me. And but the thing is, I, I realize as little as we do, uh, it matters. It makes a difference, mm. even from a small, a local level. It might become a, lo a global level, mm. and it's mm. important to send the message out. That's uh, thank you so much. I really appreciate your insights, your inspiration, and I wish you all the best. Oh, thank you, Hugh. We <laughs> have to talk about your, your tech oh, this is, <laughs> this is an studio. Interview. <laughs> my tech studio? <laughs> You're talking about what, my, my current studio right now? No, 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 your, your studio. Okay, I can talk about that. If you want. Yeah, yes, yes. This is supposed to be an interview about you, not about me. <laughs> oh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> oh, so what are you referring to? <laughs> okay, so, so my strongest impression of Hugh, Hugh's <laughs> Son, the founder of Airturn, it was was back like a decade ago at Curtis when I was a student, and oh my gosh, you know how Curtis is really really conservative, and we have a lot of great artists, but with like ninety or hundred years old, they're walking like dinosaurs, <laughs> and uh, oh of course very serious musicians yes. mm -hmm. and and uh, very serious to go to their lessons and everything, and then when you go to this beautiful but also very classy antique looking uh, office of Hughes and then you see this person sitting behind a desk voice commanding <laughs> a bunch of computers and remotely commanding everything here's like um <laughs> like computer one <laughs> page seven <laughs> <It would come up. laughs> yes let's make an appointment <laughs> like okay how about uh, december 1st december 1st <laughs> <laughs> yes, putting the cam <laughs> and talking to the computer. And that was amazing. It was like seeing 007 at Curtis. <laughs> I love it. Just love it. That maybe is my uh, first inspiration and uh, passion for technology. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry I corrupted you then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is so lovely. That's so wonderful. And that's exactly the kind of new spirit we need everywhere. Mm. And, and, and uh, yeah, so when, when Hugh made it, Pedals. I was like, hell yeah, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I have to get it, no matter what, and it's awesome. And I know wow. this company is going to go far with wow. that kind of, you know, passion and uh, mind and uh, the upgrading speed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, love it. Oh, Jenny, yeah. well, I think the best part of being part of this company is getting to work with wonderful human beings like you. It's, it's oh. a real privilege. So if, it, if anything that we can do to make your work and your art better, 
and more effective. I mean, that's really our greatest dream. So oh, you have yeah. already. And I'm sure for, for many other musicians and artists, you definitely have. Thank and you. always so helpful, our you know, musicians with, you know, um, really not the brightest mind on technology <laughs> and these pedals, you know, he's always there to help. And All right, like, enough of the Hugh commercial. <laughs> Jenny, thank you so much. I, and I'm so inspired by, you know, the New York Times has covered you several times in your performances. Your career is really off to um, just, just doing so beautifully. And uh, I wish you all the best with your school as well and all your future endeavors. Thank oh, you so thank much. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. And thanks so much again for the pedals to make it work so well. <laughs> My pleasure. <laughs>